Live from Appleton, it's APTV. Welcome to APTV <laughs> episode 513 for Thursday, October 26th. 2023. This week we have banter, of course, news updates, uh, the 2023 vanishing point, the Conriki, is that how you pronounce mm -hmm, it? Mm -hmm. uh, the very popular Inkvent calendars finally here, Woot! a contest winner, a new contest, plus a new Twisby that can be pre-sold tomorrow. Hey, Lisa. <gasps> Are you going to tell me a joke? No, well, see, I was going to say, you know, here in Appleton, we have this this thing going on with the, the public library. Yeah, it's you know, drama. The, this drama, the public library has, they're rebuilding it, they moved it, now all of a sudden- They have to move it again. They have to move it again because the owners of the building rented it out at a higher Temporary rate. Building, yeah, right. so they're moving it. Well, it just, it, it reminded me, I was at the doctor the other day and uh, we were talking and I said, well, you know, I've got this condition where I feel the mm. need to need to steal library books. Do you? Yeah, I should probably get that checked out. That was good, right? <laughs> Coming up, Sunday, October 29th is a day that is near and dear to our hearts. Absolutely. National Cat Day. Uh, National Cat Day aims to raise public awareness of cat adoption. The holiday was first celebrated in 2005 to help galvanize the public to recognize the number of cats that need to be rescued each year and also to encourage cat lovers to celebrate the cat or cats in their life for the unconditional love and companionship they bestow upon us when they feel like it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and, and I will add my two cents. Okay. Don't forget the aging and elderly cats. Oh, God. Because they need love too and... Um, so often they are overlooked because everybody wants a kitty or they want a younger cat. Right. Um, but uh, it, it, and, and so often these these older cats are stuck at the shelter. And um, a couple years ago, we adopted two cats. One was four, and we had um, lost our last cat year year and a half before that. We went to go get her Seiko, and while we were there. Um, we saw this eight-year-old, very large, very long-haired cat who was just kind of king of the mountain, just sitting there looking sad and pathetic. And Brian looked at me and said, we have to take this cat home because just, he's I just, eight. I just melted. No nobody's, one else. No nobody's nobody going to want a long-haired, older cat. And I, I have to confess that I now have competition for Brian's affection because Max is absolutely hands down a daddy's boy. And I got up this morning to um, go take my pill and go to the bathroom and I came back and Max was in bed in my spot. So, so he, he loves you. Don't forget about don't older, forget cats. older cats. Yep. Yeah. Yep. All right. Uh, Tuesday, October 31st, Halloween. Woo. What are you going to dress up as? Um, pen salesman. Oh, you're you're stretching it. I know that's pretty pretty <laughs> scary, isn't it? Um, did you you dressed up when you were young, right? I did. Yeah. Did yeah. Did you have a favorite costume? I, I honestly, I can't tell you what I dressed up as. Oh. This year, I want to dress up as a healthy individual. So yeah, I still have the little bit of the the Barry White thing going on from last it's week. It's not nearly as bad um, after the podcast on Tuesday, and many of you <laughs> did comment that Brian was was uh, his voice was definitely impacted. Um, Right after that, he basically lost his voice for three or four I, days. I gave up. It was very quiet. <laughs> I, threw, I threw up the white flag. I had Lisa take me home. Yeah. I went to sleep. Yeah. For, days. Yeah. So, anyway. Anyway. Um, Halloween. Halloween, yeah. yeah. Halloween's coming up. All right. Trick or treaters. Got, we don't do that anymore. No, we try not to. Yeah. So... Um, I've got a video online about different sections in the Hobonichi planner and um, how to use them or what you can do with them. Uh, that was a lot of fun, actually, and it really um, made me kind of itchy to actually get into the Hobonichi, so I'm excited about that. I heard that. it was pretty good. Yeah, we had a customer come in who said he watched yeah, it. Yeah. And I, didn't, I didn't actually, I haven't watched it yet. <gasps> well, I mean, I know how to you use it. You were sick. I was sick. I know how to use a Hobonichi. But <laughs> how do you know? 
Well, maybe I don't I had know. Some maybe fabulous. You probably tip or did. Trick you probably did. Yeah. You'd never thought of. Probably. You should watch it. I would not be surprised. I will. I'll watch it this afternoon. Okay. And I'll blast the volume so you can hear yourself. <laughs> oh, I hate that. <laughs> hate it. Um, Ohio Pen Show is coming up. Yes. Am I going? You might be. I might be going. <laughs> it's still a little we'll bit. See. It's still a little bit in the ether. We're not sure. Um, we're not sure, but uh, we're hoping that Brian I'm, will go I'm for like, Thursday, Friday. I'm like eighty-five percent. Yeah. There, probably. Yeah. You'll get there Thursday. You'll be there Friday. And then you leave Saturday morning and come back just after I have finished working in the store all by myself. And Well, maybe not. Huh. Not being just after. But. Why wouldn't you leave at like 5 in the morning to come and help me? Because it's a Saturday at the <laughs> Ohio Pen Show. So, um, yeah. So, Ohio Pen Show, um, there's actually auction stuff up Thursday and Saturday. Shouldn't you not tell people about that so well, you don't have as big a pool of competition? Yeah, but, you, you know, I'm not going to be there Saturday. That's true. And in order to get there Thursday, you got to pay the weekend rate, which I, most people don't. And there's not a ton of people there on Thursday. So, um, But that stuff's up this year, so there's actually going to be a live auction. Like last yeah. year, there was this weird, weird yeah. bid whatever thing going on. Um, so it looks like there's some good stuff. And uh, I look, I look forward to it. It's my favorite show of the year. Ohio is. I thought Chicago was your favorite show. No. Well, it's, it, it, we got married there. Well, yes. But <laughs> Help me out, people. We did get married there, but Ohio's got its own flavor. It it's does. Got, Every you know, show has its own vibe. It has two auctions. Ohio, I think, was the first show we ever did together. No, it was Atlanta. Atlanta. All right. I'm, I'm striking out. I'm just going to leave now. Um, what else is new? <laughs> what else is new? All right, you've got some. I've got I've got a couple new a uh, couple new vintage uh, pens this week. Um, these should be up hopefully by the time um, this airs. By the end of the by the time this airs, hopefully. Um, this week uh, we have moved off of dual folds and we're moving onto Schaefer balances. Cool. Um, so these are all lever fillers, um, and just just a couple of highlights. Some of these are. Are fairly are, are, are real nice examples. Some are user grade. I like this one. This is a little bit more user grade, but um, Carmine Red Balance Lifetime. It's got the white dot, but it's got this cool. I do like the cool conical nibs. fat conical nib with matching color section. Really very nice. Now, can I put you on the spot? Sure. What's the difference between Carmine Red and Rose Glow? Rose Glow has Rose Glow is a little bit more pink, okay, with a little bit of gray in it, where Carmine is essentially red and black. And I don't have a Rose Glow. Rose Glow is is probably <laughs> is probably the rarest color in the lineup, which and, is why I asked because especially if you're new or you're just getting into um, the balances, you may see a red pen and think, oh my God, it's a rose glow. And it probably is it's not. It's probably not. And, and, and I don't want to use the term so rare. So accordingly. I don't, want to, I don't want to use the term rare because it's not really, it's the harder to find color. It's not a rare color. They made them. Um, but when you see rose glow, you'll know. Um, just not as common. Um, but it's a beautiful, it's, it's more pink. It's got a little bit of gray. It's a lovely, lovely, lovely color. Okay. Uh, one of my favorites. Well, the Carmine Red is really gorgeous. Yeah, this is there. Yeah, there's this is this is but, no slouch. This is a really great. But if you're tiptoeing into vintage, um, it is easy. As I think we shared the story that we overpaid for was it a navy gray that we thought was a Nassau green fifty one. <laughs> yes, yes. um, so you're gonna be out there and think that it's especially depending on how it's priced, that maybe this is the rare one and you're going to get really lucky. So just make sure that you know the difference between um, the rare and the common pens that are close in color. Yeah, yeah. So there uh, you go. What uh, else you got? Uh, ne next up, I, I love these. I think these are cool. I, ha I actually have one of these um, in Carmine, <laughs> actually. Uh, that was my grandmother's. Um, a military clip. So we have the clip that starts at the back of the, the cap and rolls her over the top. And what was that for? And that's for military personnel because when you put it in your pocket, and you, it, if your shirt has a, a the military flap. shirts have the flap, it it doesn't stick up. So, uh, but this is a, a lifetime. We got a visualated section. Of course, these all have 14 karat gold nibs, lever filler. Um, really nice. The green is lovely. Um, and uh, let's see. And while we're on stripes. How about some brown? How about some brown stripes? Uh, looks really great with the with the gold trim. 
I mean, it's just really a... It's a classic looking pen. Classic, classic looking pen. So... A little oomph. Yeah, yeah. I, I love these balances. Um, one more, maybe two more. What a great color. This is more of a, more of a, 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 a common, uh, simple balance, but it's in this lovely, lovely blue. Um, single tone, 14 karat gold nib, visualated section, lever filler. Ooh, really, sure. really, really a cool, am I boring you? No. <laughs> really a cool color. In fact, it even goes I've with spent, your sweater. You know, the last several nights taking care of you. I'm tired. And, uh, and last but not least, here's another one. And the reason, and you're like, classic well, why, black. why am I showing you classic black? It's a lifetime. It's got the white dot. But again, Ooh, we have. It's a big ass nib. We have. Can you say that? On, <laughs> I do almost have, every week. We have the, the, <laughs> the, the conical, the conical two-tone. Yep. So. Those are cool. That's a really, yeah. such a cool design. Yeah. So, so we've got a bunch of those. Um, I've got some Imperials that are probably going to make the, uh, make the grade this week. Hmm. Uh, and um, we'll see what else we can, we can, we can dig up. That's got to be nice for you to make a switch from all in on a model or two for a couple weeks, and I'm, then you finally get to switch? I'm so tired of dual <laughs> folds. If I don't see another dual fold for, for a, week or two? a couple of weeks, a month, I'll be quite happy. All right. What does a ghoul put on its pizza? Monsterella cheese. Uh, the Pilot Vanishing Point 2023, the limited edition Conriki. Um, this is cool. It's got a shimmering red body with the black plated trim. Um, it does have a rhodium plated nib. So that's kind of cool. And it's, and it's matte black yes. trim. Yes, yes. Very yeah. cool. Um, if you're familiar with the Vanishing Point, you know the clip uh, is designed to hold the nib in an upright position when you put it in your pocket, which is really, really clever. Uh, the limited edition color is restricted to 2023 pens, like 2023. It uh, does come with a proprietary piston converter, the Con 40. comes with um, pilot cartridges and the cartridge cap in that cool um, limited edition box. So Conriki yes. is actually, 68th anniversary is very, um, a very important anniversary in, in, in Japan. Uh, and is often represented with uh, this red, which was the Kanriki. Um, so it's um, their 60th anniversary, and so the box represents that. Uh, and uh, it, it is a super cool, super cool pen. So yeah. I'm going to say this right now. As far as limited editions are concerned, this is going to be one. Of, now, this may not be like the Twilight, but this is going to be one that's going to hold its value. Yep. I think I think in the future, this one's going to be very desirable. Um and uh, we, we did get a little bit bigger allocation than we initially expected. Yep. Um, that's not to say it's huge. Um, it will sell out. Yes, so, because you're taking one. I, I'm absolutely first on the list on this one. Okay. I take I take one every other year. It seems I don't take yes. one every year. Correct. I don't I don't like every every edition. I don't collect vanishing points. They collect. They you? collect me. Oh. So. Okay, Eric. All right. Also, just in. The uh, Diamine Inkvent calendar, this is the purple edition for 2023. Uh, you can count down the days until Christmas with one ink a day. Um, we got these in last week. These are going fast. If you think you want one, grab it. Um, 25 inks that are all new colors and formulas, uh, including Shimmer, what's it say? Scent, Scent and Sheen, Chameleon, uh, and Chameleon and Sheen, or there are, and there are, uh, a couple new standard formula colors. Sure. So Cool. Purple edition? Yes. Can we open these up? No. What do you mean no? Well, we can. Well, we can. We don't have to open the door. We can open them. We can open, we the can open this up. Which will annoy Justin with the noise, which is always fun. Ooh. Look at these cute little bottles. Those cute little bottles. So... You get a 12 milliliter bottle yeah. every day. And then at the end, dun, 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 Cinnabon. On Christmas Day. <laughs> this one's called Cinnabon. I bet you, you that get one smells. A 30 mil bottle. So. Can, you, can you imagine how much weight I would gain if I used the Cinnabon and it actually smelled like cinnamon? Oh my God. 
I bet it does. I bet that uh, one, that one's, that one's got, they gotta be a scent. Is, right. it, is it labeled? Whether it's a scent in a sheen? It is. It's scented. Oh, it's labeled wow. on the side. Yeah. If I'm, now I'm hungry. We need to go get scones. You got sugar, something. sugar snap. Ooh, ginger so bread. I'm not telling, I'm not telling you what order these are in. Yeah. But no. what do we got here? They, what is this? I don't know. Bucks fizz. What? All right, don't get any ideas. I don't know what that is. A chameleon, apparently. Right. Whatever. So lots of cool things. They come out with this um, every year. They have for the last several years. Um, and grab it before it's gone. We have been shipping these um, every day, and so we are getting low. So, yeah, that's like, that's like, well, that's, it just doesn't seem like it's. 12 mil. I know it's 12 mil, but, you know, like our ink sample vial is, is. Oh, just, the ink sample vial is bigger and, and then skinnier, yeah. 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 So even you get you're gonna get a couple week you know, a week out of that. Yeah. Easy. So, so all there right. you go. Move that over there. <laughs> I've got over I got things over here. All right. Um, I do have a couple Hobonichi things I wanted to talk about. Uh, first of all Of course. The cats, because the cats. it's National Cat Day. So just adorable. Uh, we are getting down on some of these, so if you are considering getting a hobo and you are waiting, I would consider sooner than later. Um, I probably talk about this every week, but I'm in love, and so I just have to ask you all out there to comment and tell me why I need to get an A6 in addition to the A5, just so I can have this cover, because, oh, oh my, my God, God, I love it. And then, uh, you know, we normally talk about a lot of the fun, colorful ones. I just wanted to talk about some of the really gorgeous leather that Hobonichi um, offers for covers. Uh, this is the taut Bordeaux in the burgundy. It's very shiny. It is. Very shiny. Love it. Um, and then the Starry Night, which is cool. It's different because it has the two snaps. So I like that a lot. Um, but... You know, the coverage you can also use for other things, which is cool. Um, they will take other A6 um, notebooks and journals. So just consider that if you want to treat yourself or if you are looking for a Christmas present for somebody in your life who is into pens and ink and stationery, give it a con just a consideration. But oh. Who's the scariest bodybuilder of all time? Dr. Frankenstein. We had a contest last week from, I wouldn't call it a near food fight. I would it was call a it heated a heated discussion. discussion. Because Lindsay doesn't like potatoes. I know. Or something. How I can don't she know. be your daughter? I, I, <laughs> um, what is your favorite way to prepare potatoes? Or how do you like to eat your potatoes? We were talking about Thanksgiving and Jello Wars that my family participated in for many, many years. And so we were going to do this potato wars thing and have everyone who comes to Thanksgiving, um, and we, we try to have a, a full table, um, bring their favorite type of potato. So we also wanted to know what you guys like. So take it away, Mr. Anderson. Uh, James Mad Chemiker says, poor Brian, I hope you're feeling better than you sounded when you filmed this. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Uh, as for the potatoes, I love French fries and oven roasted potatoes, but for homemade, my mom always called them sad fried potatoes. I like that. They are leftover baked potatoes sliced thinly and fried in butter with onion, salt, and pepper. Slide thickly. Yeah. Slice thickly. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. My mom used to make what she called steak fries. Yep. Um, butter, Fine. onion, salt, and pepper. That sounds very good. I am All coming right. over to your house <laughs> for Thanksgiving. Dexter Yang says, I love a baked potato with lots of butter. Yes. That's pretty, pretty, uh... Pretty solid. Anna Uzonian. Uh, apologies if I botched that name. I love a baked sweet potato with lots of salt, pepper, and butter. So on the same same vein, but a you sweet know, potato. I haven't done much with sweet potatoes. We should try that. I'm not a sweet potato fan. Okay. I don't know gonna, why. Sorry. You can, you can try it. I could. Walt Huntsman says, your potato discussion reminded me of a family Thanksgiving during which three of my favorite aunts were in the kitchen arguing about how to properly make mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes, uh, mashed is my favorite way to make potatoes, but hash browns are my favorite way to eat them. Nice. 
You do love a good hash potato. Uh, hash mashed brown. Mashed potato. Yes. Hash brown if it's crispy. It has to be crispy. Yeah. yeah There's nothing worse than mushy hash browns. Mushy hash browns are the worst. Yeah. Just, yeah. All right. John Park says, potatoes. Never found one I didn't like, but my go-to is oven fried with some peppers and onions. Yep. Yep. Okay. Uh, Edward Stotts, some of my preferred potatoes, twice baked, but a good mashed with gravy also yes. works. And that is key, I think, with mashed, is gravy. Butter, salt, pepper. Lots of gravy. And some gravy. Lots yeah. of gravy. Yeah. Um, Dark Tim, brown gravy. Tim Chi says it's got to be potato latkes with applesauce. Nice. Hope to see you with the Ohio Pen Show in a couple weeks. Uh, Johnny Montalvo, solely for the pun, I make twice baked potatoes and then I add a thin, add thin strips of steak to it. Then I add more steak just so that I can call them twice staked potatoes. Nice, Johnny. Okay, we got a winner. The winner is Lucas Bell. His comment was, I love cheesy potato casserole. I don't make it myself, but it's a family party staple. I mostly make mashed at home. Is he the first one to mention cheese? Because I didn't. I guess twice baked has. Often has cheese often on has it. cheese on yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah okay. cheese is good too. All right. Congratulations, Lucas. Uh, email eric at andersonpens.com. We'll take care of getting that credit onto your AP account. We have a new contest or a survey. We did. We um, did. We, we no do. longer. We do. We do. New contest. What is your favorite vintage pen and why? why? There are so many to choose from. And I'm going to say vintage being... 19, let's say Parker 75 and earlier. Oh, you're putting rules on it. Well, that's what we consider vintage. Everything else is modern. Okay. And if you don't have a favorite vintage pen or you don't do vintage, why not? What is your favorite vintage pen? Mine? Yeah. Uh, Mine, do I use it or just my favorite vintage pen? What's your favorite vintage pen? Doesn't Uh, have to be Rosboro? Rosboro? Well, that's mine. Um, I, I bought have, that. Fair and square. You did. Uh, my favorite vintage pen, besides the Rosboro, would be uh, probably the one I I won from a pen forum years and years and years and decades ago. Um, there was a group of people on a very old forum. I don't even know what you'd call it now. Was it... Uh... Was it, it wasn't Zoss the list. It no, was like that. All, uh, yeah, it was like four pens or something. Yeah. And a group of us who couldn't go to a show would all chip in and offer a prize. And I won a Parker 51 once. I think and I know where that pen is. We, it's in my drawer. There's a Parker 51 in the lobby in the house. Green? Yeah. That says, did not go to the show award or something so that's one of my favorites that's your favorite okay one of them All right. i have several but okay that'll do anything else um let's see my favorite vintage pen i'll have to think about that probably so you put me on the spot but you're not going to answer uh probably um probably something aiken lambert okay because i just i love i love their overlays okay um what about beautiful. the one you got from gary that's like your from Gary? Gary Lehrer. Um, Is that the, your most expensive pen? The your relief, second most expensive. The, the, the relief. I have no idea what you have. <laughs> and we're going to keep it that way. Um, no, I got I got a um, uh, a gold relief from Gary Lair many, many years ago that I actually made an installment, <laughs> an installment <laughs> plan over three you months. You put it on layaway. Yeah, I put it on it. layaway. Yeah, he called me up. He says, Brian, $1,000 Esterbrook, he said, so. And then he changed the price on me, that bugger. So, but whatever. I love Gary. Sterling silver end caps. Okay. Um, it's made by Onoto, has an overfeed, uh, marked barrel for Esterbrook. Um, is that your favorite? Or is that just uh, a favorite story? No, well, you're, you asked about it, so I I'm did. telling you about it. So, All right. yeah. Maybe not my favorite. So you're, so. you're not going to tell us what your favorite is? I'm, I'm going to go home and I'm going to look. It's, I'm going to say it's Aiken Lambert. Okay. That's my favorite, favorite brand, probably. All right. Eco T, Rosa. 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 This is um, your standard Twisby Eco T with the slightly triangular grip. Um, in a new color, it's kind of a bright rosy red. I would not call it, uh, we don't have it in hand yet, but it, the pictures make it look like it's not fire engine red, but it's kind of a rosy red. Mm-hmm. It looks really cool. Yep. 
Um, very excited. Uh, Pre-orders start tomorrow, Friday the 27th, and we are allowed to ship them on this coming Tuesday, October 31st on Halloween. So you will get it um, just a couple days later. Great. Anything else? As soon as we're done, I'll think of something. Awesome. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> Tune in next time for more talk about pens, ink, and paper. You can check us out on as you can check us out on social media at sure Anderson can. Pens sure and can. like this video. Give me a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. And sorry, I'm stumbling and fumbling. Bye.